Hello and welcome to worship as we gather together for the 21st Sunday after Trinity. We are uh, nearing the very end of the church here. We just have a, a few weeks left and so very soon we'll begin the beautiful cycle all over again with Advent. Just a note uh, for today's service. The goal of everlasting life keeps our hearts and spirits high while we serve God here in this life. And like an athlete thinks ahead to winning in order to encourage himself while he struggles, so we think ahead towards our goal. Yet because we are human and our old natures are still tied to this world, the question always arises in our mind, if I give myself to the service of God, well, who's going to take care of me? Today's service answers clearly, God. We realize that by choosing to serve God, we place ourselves in opposition to the majority of this world's population, which ignores and defiles him. Because of this, we cannot realistically expect to be honored as we represent him who has endured so much defiance from sinful human beings. We're going to begin our service today with uh, hymn number 801, How Great Thou Art, number 801. Thou art. 
of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, fellow redeemed, no matter where you are right now, no matter what you're going through, no matter what time it is, no matter who's with you, know that if this is your penitent confession, then Jesus has brought wonderful news to you. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 8, titled, How Majestic is Your Name? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, 
and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your household, the church, in continual godliness that throughout your protection she may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve you in good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, 
to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today is verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Our epistle assigned for today is from Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And at Capernaum there was an official whose son was ill. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. As he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them the hour when he began to get better, and they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. The father knew that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he himself believed, and all his household. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our hymn of the day now, hymn number 607, From Depths of Woe I Cry to Thee.
Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Before I became a pastor, I was a computer systems architect. Now, as the overall architect of these big projects, I was expected to know every part of the systems that I integrated for people. And over time, as my knowledge increased, it honestly seemed to me like there was nothing I didn't understand. There were no mysteries within these computer systems. Then one day, my company switched suppliers, and this meant that suddenly I had new equipment and was dealing with many things that I didn't understand. I really didn't like that. In fact, you could probably say that I kind of hated it. I don't like not understanding things. I don't like mysteries, and I'm sure you've been there too. And unfortunately for us, the Bible sometimes causes all of us to acknowledge our lack of understanding, and honestly, today is no exception. Christ says to the official, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Although he seems to rebuke the man, Christ still gives him the sign he wants. Why does Christ do that? Also, the man believed the word of Jesus in verse 50, and yet it says again in verse 53 that when he heard the report that the child was healed, he believed. What's going on? Did he come to faith twice? Surely he didn't gain faith and lose it again in just a few hours. Part of the problem for us is that faith is a mystery. How does any person believe? We Lutherans know that the Holy Spirit gives faith by calling us through the gospel, not by our own reason or strength. Yet that does not really solve the problem for us. Since faith is beyond our reason, we can't fully comprehend the moment when a person is converted. He goes from a lost sinner full of nothing but sin and unbelief to a saint of God with faith, clothed with the righteousness of Christ. So we may struggle with this in light of the task of evangelism. We know that the Spirit calls people to faith through the gospel. But when we speak the good news of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection, people do not always believe. Some may believe later on, or others not at all. In the same way, not all to whom Christ preached the gospel were saved. We may forget that the Holy Spirit works faith in those who hear the word when and where it pleases him. This may be especially vexing to those close to us, family and friends, who hear the gospel and seem to believe, yet go away from the church. They may either abandon the faith once taught to them, or they never had faith at all. And I know many of us wish that we had a magic wand to make people come back to faith. But even the word of God is not a magic wand. It only gives faith when and where it pleases God. So the best we can do is trust in the gospel of Christ ourselves and speak it to others when we have the opportunity and leave the rest to Christ. Our hearts may break at times when some do not believe, yet we trust that our Lord is loving and gracious. Now another complication in this mystery of faith is that there are two aspects of faith. There's the aspect of faith which is obedience to the first commandment, and there's the aspect of faith that is a free gift from the Holy Spirit. Now our obedience to the commandment is always flawed. Our efforts at trusting God are imperfect and spoiled by our sinful flesh. Yet God's gift of faith is always perfect. So saving faith is flawless and reliable. So we see the man in our text believing, yet believing again. At one point, he seems to believe only in the promise of Christ to heal his son. That is an imperfect beginning of faith. Yet that is better than when he came to Christ at the beginning. Then he seemed to only believe the healing would happen if Christ came in person to do the healing. 
But even better is the faith the man had when he heard that his son was healed that very hour. Then his faith saw the word of Christ as powerful enough to instantaneously heal from any distance. The word that created that kind of healing is more than the word of man, even if the man were somehow able to heal. This is the word of the Lord. So the man believes, and all of his household with him. What began as a sluggish faith that only grew reluctantly became a faith that spilled over to others around him, surely because he spoke about them, to them about Christ. Where growth was slow one minute, it became swift in another. But you know, brothers and sisters, we also struggle in weakness. Sometimes growth comes slow or does not seem to come at all, whether in terms of personal growth or the numbers of people in our church. Other times, things move forward more rapidly. Who can understand it? Is it like the wind that blows here or there? We know not why. Or like the growth of seeds in the ground? The work of the Holy Spirit is a mystery, not for us to comprehend. So may we simply trust that the Lord will do all things in the best way and in the best time. You see, at the right time, he gave us faith through his signs, which are the sacraments. We couldn't believe without those signs, so he sent them to us. He has washed us with healing water and fed us with miraculous food. His powerful world, word is joined to the physical elements. This is not the word of a mere man, but the man who is God. So all we who were born as children of death are raised to new life. And that is why he became the son of man. As a human being, he could take our place as a child destined for death. When he received our death, he rescued us. Then he was raised to show that death was beaten. He did not need to beat death for himself since he was always the immortal son of God who only laid down his life by his free choice. For our sake, he died and rose to beat death. So even when we hover at the brink of death, we need not fear it. The mighty word of Christ has spoken for us. The sign of baptism has raised us to new life. Our Savior's death and resurrection demonstrate that the grave has truly lost its sting. Therefore, we can be calm and ready to meet our Lord. Even if fleshly fears disturb us, we know the outcome already because he has spoken the word. No matter what anxiety you feel over COVID, over the election, over your neighbors, over your own safety, know that God has spoken and thus you are healed. Although we have not seen the result yet of our own eyes of the final day, we can count on the fulfillment of what our dear Lord has promised because we know that he always keeps his word. And with that, we have the peace that passes all understanding. And may it guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now gather together to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and ever-living God, you make us both to will and to do those things that are good and acceptable in your sight. Let your fatherly hand ever guide us and your Holy Spirit ever be with us to direct us in the knowledge and obedience of your word that we may obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God Almighty, even as you bless your servants with various and unique gifts of the Holy Spirit, continue to grant us the grace to use them always to your honor and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following his steps we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you O Jerusalem Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our final hymn for today is hymn number 660. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. 660. Stand up for Jesus the 
strife will not be long. This day, the din of battle, the next the victor's song. The soldiers overcoming, their crown of life shall see, and with the King of glory shall reign. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this service as we gather together to remember the mystery of God and yet how it is at one time frustrating because we don't understand it. It is in fact a great source of peace. And so no matter what you are going through in this life, know that God is with you.